So today's MacBook is an A1708. It says liquid damage, no power, and we're going to see what's actually wrong with it. By the way, we got the Zao mouse back up in the office, and it is set up, and it is working. So I'm quite excited about that. It seems like I have three people watching live. Those are Eli numbers. So I have zero viewers on Twitch, and I have two viewers on YouTube. Yeah, I have Eli numbers today. Something must be wrong. I don't think I've done anything to deserve Eli numbers. Let's get started and figure out what's wrong with this board. So they say no power. So the first thing we're going to do here, take this, have our USB-C amp meter over here. Now remember, we want to unplug the battery because the amperage the board is drawing is going to tell me what type of problem we have with this board. And I want a reading from the USB-C amp meter that is going to give me an idea of what the board is taking, not the board plus the battery. Because the battery is always going to be taking a different amount of amperage depending on how much is charged. The board typically takes a static amount of amperage if it's doing a certain task. So let's see what we get when we plug it in. It says 5.25 volts. It should jump up to 20, and it just did. It should jump up to 500 milliamps, which it did. This indicates to me that this is actually turning on. Even though they claim it's not turning on, it probably is. Maybe it's turning on and has no brain. Maybe it's turning on and has no image or no backlight. But there's one way to figure out what's going on with that. By the way, hello to all five people watching. Really, YouTube and Twitch. Five viewers between the two of you, these two platforms? Wow. I'm humbled. Now I know what it's like to be Eli the computer guy. Nobody likes me anymore. First test for it being brain dead is caps lock. So if I can hit the caps lock key and I get a little light on it, there's a chance that this is not completely brain dead. And it doesn't. That could be because it's not booted into anything yet. So, Okay, here we go. So it's fully booted. As you can see, the caps lock key is going on in and out. Not in and out. It's lighting up. And whatever the, the opposite of lighting up is, I'm, my brain is too fried right now to have the word available. But it's a good thing I'm only playing to an audience of a small number. My, my streaming audience tonight is a small percentage of my subscriber count. A very small number, a limited number of people are watching my stream. A small percentage of my subscribers are watching my stream tonight. A very small percentage of my subscribers are watching my stream tonight. So this most likely means that we are missing image or missing image and backlight. Now let's see if we have something on the screen by zooming in on it. Now do you see an Apple logo? You see this over here? To me this looks like an Apple logo. That looks like an Apple logo. So most likely, we have an image. We're simply missing a backlight. So this doesn't have a backlight. Now, as you all know from the previous videos I've done, Apple has designed this machine differently than they designed the machines from the few years before. If you get liquid on the display connector or the display cable, 52 volts backlight, CPU data line, no separation, just beep, ow and you're overclocking like Linus. So what we need to do is take the board out, take a look at the backlight circuit, see if anything looks funny on this backlight circuit. Let's take a look at the board in this MacBook. This MacBook is an 820-00840-A1708. This is not the model that has the solder on SSD, but it is the model where the SSD that they do put in it dies for no reason. Apple. Now, we're going to take a look at this under the microscope and see what we've got. CD3215 has corrosion, but it's on the top of the chip, but keep that in mind. We may want to reflow it. Resistor powering CD3215 has a little bit of corrosion, but again, we'll just keep that in mind, but we may reflow it later. No, clean up that area a little bit. Ooh, what's this? All right, I got to see what that area is for. It's right by the charger. Oh, ow, right to the face. This is the backlight section over here. These are backlight capacitors, backlight fuse, backlight current sensing, and over here, yeah, backlight... Backlight driver, ouch. So first thing we're going to do here, we're going to plug it in, and I want to see what voltage I get at backlight output. Because just like when I'm looking to see how much amperage the 
logic board is taking different numbers for the amperage it's taking, it's going to tell me different things. The amount of voltage I get at backlight output is going to tell me different things about what could be wrong with the circuit, and it's going to save me some time. So we're going to plug this in, and we're going to see what voltage I get at backlight output. Do you think it will ever be fully impossible to fix MacBooks one day? Absolutely. Once everybody decides that they don't want Apple products and they stop buying them, there'll be no MacBooks left, and therefore nothing to repair. Once nobody wants a MacBook anymore, once nobody owns a MacBook anymore, it will be impossible to fix them. It's a day that I can only dream of, but I believe that if I just keep dreaming, that someday my dream will come true. Okay, back to this. Turn on our multimeter here, put it into voltage mode, get the range set up properly so it doesn't just give me funny readings in the middle of the air, and backlight output. Zero volts. Okay, point 0.2 to zero. Point 0.2. Point 0.2 volts. Okay, that's interesting. So now, point 0.2 volts is not something I'm used to getting. So we're going to follow along in this circuit and try to figure out where the voltage goes away. So at the end of the circuit, I noticed that we had 0 0.2. Now, instead of checking over here and 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 over here, and over here blah, 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 blah. I'm going to check at the beginning. Why waste time checking everything in between? I like to check the end and the beginning. So we're going to go over to this area over here around and see what we're getting closer to the beginning. Fume extractor? Huh? Fume extractor? Yeah, it's on. You just kicked it on, didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't. You, you didn't hear it? You have a terrible poker face. No, I swear. I think it's you are such a bad liar. But anyway, back to that. Let's see what we get on that coil. Point three. Interesting. Okay, that means most likely Q8400 over here is not opening. But why is Q8400 not opening? What's wrong with it? Okay, Q8400 is going to be on the other side of the board. Now this here is a P-channel MOSFET. This is going to open when the voltage on the gate, pin 3, is less than the voltage on the source, pin 4. And if you're not sure how these MOSFETs work, you can check the document that I linked to down below. It's about a 150-page document, uh, Basics of Board Repair. And it has a nice, big pictures, big font. It's, it's almost like a children's book for board repair, really. And it's designed to try and make it easy to learn. So if you don't know how these transistors work or when they're supposed to open and all that good stuff, you can check it out, and you'll be able to follow along a bit better. So this is going to open when the voltage in the gate, pin 3, is less than the voltage in the source, pin 4. So let's see where we can measure the voltage in the gate and the source. It seems like we're going to have to turn the board around, and that's a bit of a pain in the ass because as you can see how this thing is put together. The display cable is over here, nice and short, and watch what happens when I try to flip the board. When I try to flip the board to measure the other side, with this plugged in, it will unplug itself almost every time. F my life. So there, this is going to be very tricky. This is a nice little balancing act here. Okay, the charger is trying to rip the screen cable out because the charger is trying to move. No, 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 you cut that shit out. Now a nice effing try a charger. The charger is trying to move the board. You see that? You see that? It's, tr it's dancing away. Okay, so let's check what we get on Q8400 pin 3. This is going to be the voltage that I need to be lower than what's on pin 4. So pin 4 is going to be what I imagine 13 volts from PP Bush G3 hot because PP Bush G3 hot over here is what is applying our backlight voltage. PP Vin SOSW underscore LCD backlight FET is actually a subrail of our PP Bush G3 hot. So let's measure. Desk camera. Be very careful not to unplug the screen. We have 13 volts on the gate, 13 on the source. So now the transistor is not at fault, because remember, with a P-channel MOSFET, it's only going to open when the voltage in the gate is lower than the voltage in the source. The voltage in the gate and the source are the same. As a result of the source and gate voltage being the same, the transistor is not going to open. Replacing the transistor because power is present on input but not on output is pointless. The same way that replacing a light bulb when the light switch is off is pointless. It's not being told to turn on. You can't blame it. So I can't blame Q8400. What I can do is blame something that's going on here. So let's take a look at how this voltage would get lowered on the gate. So R8401 takes the voltage from the source and puts it on the gate, and that is going to ensure 
that you never have the transistor opening because it's just going to take the voltage from the source and place it straight on the gate. However, R8402 can then turn this into a voltage divider. See, now you have two resistors. One resistor between the high voltage and where you want the lower voltage to be, and the other resistor where the lower, you want the lower voltage to be and ground. But this resistor does not go to ground. It goes to backlight SD. Uh, so this over here is going to be the LED driver, and the LED driver shorts backlight SD to ground, which allows this voltage divider to work, which allows this transistor to open, which allows backlight to go through to the circuit. So our question is going to be, why does LP80, why does this not doing its job? Is it that R8402 is blown? It could be that C8400 here is blown, and it's shorting the gate to the source. It could be that R8402 is blown or corroded, or it could be that our LED driver simply not doing its job. So there's one way to find out which of those three outcomes it possibly is, and that's by measuring our board, which we're going to do right now in the microscope. So first things first, let's check pins four and three of that transistor. So gate and source, 363 ohms. That's fucked up. So. That's not supposed to be 363 ohms. Yeah, that, that's way too low. So, because if you look on the schematic in the board view, we have an 80 kilo ohm resistor between source and gate, and then we have a 1000 picofarad capacitor. So either C8400 is partially shorted, or this transistor is blown. It's one or the other. So what do you think it's gonna be? C8400 or bad Q8400? Now, if I had to blame one of two items, a big, bulky, large Arnold Schwarzenegger-ish transistor or this little sissy itty bitty capacitor over here that actually has some corrosion on it, I'd be likely to blame the capaci capacitor. So let's just flick that capacitor off of the board. Get the fuck out of my store. And now we have 77 kilo ohms over there. So what we did over there is quite simple. So I saw that there should be about 80 kilo ohms of resistance, maybe a little less because the, resistor, the transistor itself is going to have its own internal circuitry and the capacitor is going to carry something, but it shouldn't be from 80 kilo ohms down to 300 ohms. The only other thing in the path of the circuit over here was C8400. So we looked at C8400 and we told C8400, Get the fuck out of my store. And now we're most likely going to have backlight. Now that capacitor is not actually necessary. We can get away without having it there. But I'm still going to give it a shot of, you know, replacing it, just to make things nice. Make things nice, nice, nice. And we're also gonna touch up some of these areas, reflow the stuff that's a little nasty. Put the board through the ultrasonic cleaner. Make it great again. Don't you tombstone on me, little resistor and capacitor. This is not a Paul Daniels stream. We have standards here. Damn straight. As straight as my tweezers. Let's see, are those two capacitors going to the same pin? Because if they are, putting in all this extra effort to make sure they don't touch is stupid. Yeah, so that's a shared ground pin, so it doesn't matter. I don't know, it's these ones over here, that's, uh, yeah, hap, yeah, those two are all, and that's the same thing, so, that's fine. They can touch if they really want to touch, show that they love each other. Okay, so now we're going to turn this MacBook on, plug it in, the screen is plugged in, which means just plug it in the other way so I can actually see the amperage reading, and we're going to measure and see if we get a backlight on the screen. Also, I almost forgot to put this in my little bag. Thank you for reminding me, people. We're using a little bit more amperage than before, which leads me to believe that the backlight on the screen may actually be turning on now. So I'm going to measure backlight voltage. Expecting a nice 39 volts there. 44 will do. 52 would mean it's not getting to the screen. 44 seems right. So we should be seeing a question mark folder soon. And if we do see a question mark folder... Ah, look at that question mark folder, isn't it? So that question mark folder means that we have fixed the board. Uh, and that's pretty cool. So this board has been fixed. So just to go back over on the schematic and board view to show you what it is that was wrong with this MacBook. On the backlight circuit, we have this transistor over here. Let's just put it into full view. 
So this is the backlight circuit. It's going to do take the 13 volts in, turn it into 44 volts out. And this is a transistor. This is kind of like a switch, it's like a light switch. It's going to choose whether or not to send the voltage from here to here. That's only going to happen with a P-channel MOSFET if the voltage in the gate, pin 3, is lower than the voltage in the resist on the source, pin 4. Now, this is a voltage divider that's supposed to, when the backlight driver shorts back that SD to ground, this voltage divider will be allowed to work and take the 13 volts here and make it 5 volts over here. However, this capacitor was corroded and blown. So this capacitor was taking the voltage from here and sending it to here. So rather than this being an 80 kilo ohm resistor, since this capacitor was blown in passing power, it was kind of acting like a 300 ohm resistor. So the voltage divider was not able to do its job. So the way this works is you're going to send a teeny, 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 tiny piece of that has worth of 13 volts over here. And then the resistor below it is typically going to be a value of less resistance than the top resistor, and that's going to send the bulk of it to ground. Whereas over here, the, if the top resistor is 300 ohms, and then so you're sending quite a bit of 13 volts over there, a lot of amperage, and then you have, you're sending 63.4 kilo ohms worth to ground. That's, that's nothing. This is going to be like you know, 13 volts up here, 12.999 volts up here. That's, that's not really going to do, do the job. So once we kicked off this capacitor and replaced it, then we, we got 13 volts here. The voltage over here is going to be lower. This transistor is going to be able to open again, and it's going to work. Again, if you have voltage in the input of the transistor but not the output, you cannot simply replace a transistor without seeing if it's being told to turn on, the same way that you would not replace a light bulb if the light switch was not on. So that's it for today. As always, I hope you learned something.